when the devil reminds you of your past, remind him of his future and remind him of your future. One of the biggest things we have to do as a believer when we slip up is to look up and focus in even more on the Lord. God's will, it's God's will. It's a plan for you and it's not done with you yet. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I wanna to talk today about how God is not done with you yet. The Lord is not done with you yet. And I just feel led to talk about this. You know, one of the biggest lies the devil likes to tell us is that God is through with you. You've messed up too much, you've gone too far, and God, he's just done. And there's nothing you can do. There's no way you can fix it. There's no way you can get better. You are just, you're ruined. And that is one of the biggest lies the enemy likes to tell us. In my life, I have been through a lot of stuff and I have made a lot of bad decisions. I mean, I have really messed it up. As a believer in Christ, you are gonna make mistakes. You're going to mess up, you're gonna drop the ball. But I'm here to tell you today that he's not done with you, even when you make a mistake. One of the biggest things we have to do as a believer when we slip up is to look up and focus in even more on the Lord. Dust off the devil dirt and keep on moving. See, what happens is a lot of times you and I will mess up and we feel like, you know what? God doesn't want to hear me no more. He's done with me. He doesn't care about my needs anymore. I messed up too far and there's no point. Well, with that mindset, you begin to still make the same mistakes because you think the Lord's mad at you and that he doesn't want anything to do with you. And that's far from the truth. But speaking of truth, we're gonna get into it right now. We're gonna tackle the word of God. And what does the Lord, what does the word, the written word of God have to say? In Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11, it says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So the first key point is, God has a plan for your life. He has a plan for your life. He's not done with you yet. He has a plan for your life and he has a plan for you to have an expected end. He wants you to live a life filled with peace and not evil. It doesn't matter what you've done. It's about what Jesus did for you. So you need to accept that peace. The Prince of Peace is Jesus. His plan for you is to be saved, healed, and delivered. Another key point here is in Psalms chapter 57 verses two. And it talks about purpose, that God has a purpose for your life. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for men. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. You may have dropped the ball, you may have messed up, but you know what? There is still purpose. He's not done with you yet. And he promises in his word that he will perform it. He will perform all he has planned for your life. If it's God's will, it's God's bill. He has a plan for you and he's not done with you yet. Now watch this. One of the biggest things we need to embrace is that God chose you before you were even created. He had a plan for you and a purpose and he chose you before the foundation of the world. And the Bible says in Ephesians chapter one, verses 11, in whom also we, you and I, have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. You see, God has a plan for your life. But we go through a lot of stuff in life and I have been through a lot of troubles and you probably have been through a lot of troubles. Jesus said you will face troubles, but he says, don't worry because I have overcome the world. What does that mean? That means he has a place prepared for you. He's going to prepare a place for you. There's mansions and streets of gold and so much more than that, that is prepared for you. And it says that nothing you have ever been through compares to what God has in store for you. That means no matter what troubles you've been through, you may have been through loss, grief, despair, your anxieties, your fears, nothing. It all pales in comparison to what God has in store for you if you love Jesus. Romans chapter eight, verses 18 says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Man, that is powerful. That means you can actually set your mind on things above and focus on your future. When the devil reminds you of your past, remind him of his future and remind him of your future. 
devil get behind me because you're gonna suffer for all eternity and I'm not. I'm gonna be in a place of pure peace, joy, and love because that's where the presence of the Lord is at. I'm gonna have mansions. I'm gonna walk on streets of gold and my family's gonna be up there and we're gonna be together forever, for eternity. Guess what, devil? Nothing you do can penetrate into this kingdom. God has a plan for you. God has a purpose for you. He knew you in advance. He predestined you and your sufferings are nothing in comparison to what God has in store for you.